Hello, good evening everybody, all you beautiful souls. It's been a minute. How's everybody doing tonight? I'm gonna give you a minute to settle in as my husband in the other room reminded me. Um, but welcome to a fresh episode of Mind Body Medicine with Dr. Ariel. That is me. Um, and today, I kind of wanted to talk about the most important medicine, in my opinion, on earth, um, other than, of course, love. That's my cheesy favorite to say. Um, but the most important medicine to me, biochemically, is food. Um, we all have our different favorite ones and combinations, but what if we could use our food intake to boost our mood output? and our well-being kind of all at the same time, right? So tonight's goal is to sort of explore a few different ways that we can do just that. So as always, um, I'll go ahead and start out with a little bit of story time. Um, my mom growing up was definitely what you would call a health nut, um, way before it was considered cool to be crunchy or granola like you were just sort of labeled like a weirdo a little bit um in fact i was i wouldn't call it bullied but my friends definitely kind of like made fun of our dinners when they would come over and like the massive amounts of just vegetable intake coupled with the complete absence of junk food um like seriously if we got like a cookie it was literally one oreo and and that was it um because sugar was poison right so that's how just how i was raised to kind of contextualize this a little bit um but when i was 16 my mom decided to go back to school she was kind of the housewife of uh, my dad who is a doctor and, and you know wanted a woman to stay home so once we were sort of older she applied to columbia university we were all really proud of her um she commuted two times every month back and forth from Virginia to New York City. Um, so she could take classes with Dr. Andrew Weil. Weil, I'm still not even sure how to say it. People do both. Um, but she earned her degree as what they call an integrative nutritionist. So it's essentially how to combine what we know about nutrition and food to our bodies in a clinical sense, right? Like how, basically exactly how I said for this talk, how we can capitalize and harness on the nutrient intake to create the exact performance we want from our moods to our, our body movements, things like that. Um, so she earned her degree as an integrative nutritionist, like right as I was entering in my high school year. Um, and then sadly, the following year, she was diagnosed with breast cancer um, and it ended up taking her life. And so she never really got to clinically practice her dream, um, but I can't. And so I still kept every single one of her VHS tapes um back in that day from from her curriculum um so thank god they were taped i'm actually really excited because they're quite valuable um and and really surprisingly very little has changed in the curriculum um it's it's really more like the general population is finally like wising up to the things that she learned um 15 years ago if i'm honest one of my favorite and most controversial statements during a um wasn't quite a medical conference, much smaller scale, but I was, they were sort of making it sound like all of these therapies in America and novel treatments and drugs, particularly in the alternative healing field, um, not drugs, i.e. Um, basically, sorry. So what I said was that they, they essentially took everything that they had just discovered and, and copied what Europe was doing for 20 years. And that was truly what occurred. Um, <laughs> basically that's the, the trend that you'll see. I'm like, well, so if you really want like the cutting edge stuff, just look at Europe. And I'm very much biased because my aunt um, has lived in Germany for like 35 years now. She's an American, but she married a German. And so she has drank that Kool-Aid and she is all about <laughs> that lifestyle stuff. So I've had the benefit of really being aware and woke to Eastern and Western and everything there in between. Um, so we all know that food impacts our mood, right? How many times have we caught ourselves just being hangry, right? We're like 
so, most of the time, at least when I'm hangry, I don't even realize that's why. I'm j I just have an attitude and a lot of people can identify it, but I sort of lost, like during medical training, I lost the connection between like my receptors to say like, I'm full, I'm hungry, I'm sleeping. Like literally you have to train yourself to, right? Like you eat when you can, you sleep when you can. And so, yeah, it's not really <laughs> conducive to never be hangry, right? Um, so the foods basically directly affect our neurotransmitters. What do I mean by that? These are basically just little chemicals that message between neurons in our brains and send signals, send messages, right? And there are particular food groups that are especially useful to promoting the, the formation of the neurotransmitters. Um, and so that is why in study after study, we're finding that our neurotransmitters throughout the day are always the highest after we have eaten a meal, right? Rather than in between, they kind of fall. And that's why our energy too can tend to dwindle. So therapeutically, the way that I wanted to kind of explore this um, is to basically contextualize it for seasonal affective disorder. Um, you might have heard of that. It's abbreviated SAD, um, but I'll just kind of start touching on just a little bit of what that means. Um, it's essentially a condition diagnosed when an individual with, um, you know, a mental health disorder, whether it's anxiety or depression or any, any spectrum of mood disorder, right, um, experiences an intensified sort of episode is what they call it, but it's really just intensified symptoms, right? You're, you're, if you're, if you're manic, you're feeling extremely manic during this time, or usually, obviously, since it's depression, you, you would go the opposite route if, if you tend in that bipolar pattern. Um, and then for at least two years that occurs during the same season. So it's not that much to diagnose it. Um, it's, it doesn't really matter also whether you have the diagnosis, right? The point is it's cold, it's windy. It gets dark before we even get home from work. Most of us, um, we're feeling this need to like eat and sleep more. There's like this gravitational pull almost to, hibernate, right? Um, which is what nature does. And our energy is just lower than other times of the year. Um, we are leaving the house less. We're socializing less. Um, a lot of our extracurricular activities for children and adults are kind of like taking their breaks for the holidays. They've gone a little dormant, right? Um, and so I think all of these factors in and of itself makes the average human with or without depression more predisposed to at least the blues, if nothing else, right? Um, feeling more sad than usual for a more prolonged period of time, even if it's not classified clinically as depression. And with mental health, it's it's all one big spectrum. And that's why I say in a lot of cases, and a lot of my psychiatry friends will tell you this too, the actual diagnosis isn't nearly as important as how you manage it, right? Like there's no cut and dry way of everyone who's bipolar gets this med combination. No, it's, and, and so it doesn't matter. You might be, you might be medicating someone for a, a different disease entirely, but it works for them. So just paying attention to yourself, each individual thing is, is really important. Um, and of course, to top that all off, we're in the midst of a global pandemic, elephant in the room. Um, so we're all sad this year. Okay. We all have seasonal affective disorder. This is Christmas number two, right? Yeah. Um, gosh, I lose track. I feel like we're in this vortex of pandemic where I can't even figure out like the year. The year is the problem. The day I've got down. <laughs> um, anyway, back to the whole point. I have an entire class um, like way back on the brain gut connection. So I'll try not to repeat too much of that here. Um, but if you have specific questions, feel free to chime in. I know not everyone has time to just be like, oh, I like this girl. Let me go back to episode one. Um, so I get it. And, and eventually these things will repeat anyway. So um, let's start with those neurotransmitters. Um, checking in here. Okay. Starting with the neurotransmitters, the three that affect our, our mood um, the most profoundly, you may or may not have heard of these, are serotonin dopamine and norepinephrine. So we'll start with serotonin. Um, that is our biggest happy hormone. It's what we're most familiar with. Um, it's one of the more common uh, targets of medication for mental health issues, whether it's anxiety or depression, you have those serotonin reuptake inhibitors. Um, and 
The interesting fact about this is that 80% of serotonin is produced in our guts rather than our brains. Um, and so we've sort of got it all wrong, depending on how you look at it. Um, but serotonin gets released after we eat things like carbohydrates. What do we mean by that? We're talking fruit, dairy, um, starches, and of course, sugars, which we'll come back to. Um, but generally, when you when you consume high serotonin containing foods, you feel enhanced calmness, you have an improved mood. Over time, it can lessen depression. Um, but coming back to the sugars, I think we've all had a sugar high, right? Whether it's in childhood or adulthood or throughout, I have a sweet tooth myself. Um, but basically, sugar does taste good and it does make us feel happy. I mean, anything from a baked good to a lollipop and you have just made my day. But um, interestingly, that's kind of an exception to the rule because it doesn't mean that that's good for you, right? So in, as a matter of fact, sugar acts on the same neurological pathway of crack cocaine. Um, so even though, yes, it makes you feel good, it's first of all, highly addictive. And second of all, it can you know, contribute to a variety of different diseases, one of them being cancer. Um, so yeah, sugar in the forms of like fruit and of course in moderation, right? All things in moderation, including moderation. It's one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, just, just something to be mindful of. But that's an example of how it can influence your mood, right? But what's the difference between that short-term addictive sugar high and eating that fruit and dairy and starches that take longer to digest? What happens after the sugar high? You crash, right? You, I mean, I used to do this as a kid so often. Like it, it was almost pathological. Just eat so much candy or so much that I would like go into a two hour nap or something. To be fair, I think it goes back to my mom's health nut ways. Cause whenever I like went into that food coma, it was at a friend's house. It was like, I was free from my like vegetable requirements. And so I just ate all the junk food that I could. Funny how that works. All right. So the other two, and I'll we'll sort of talk about these neurotransmitters together. Um, we've got dopamine and we've got norepinephrine. So these two are going to be released after you're eating things like proteins, um, meat, poultry, dairy, and legumes, which if you're not familiar with that, a lot of people aren't. Um, that's things like beans, lentils. Interestingly, I believe peanuts are also considered legumes and not nuts. Um, don't quote me. It's like that tomato being a fruit thing. <laughs> it's a contentious debate. Um, but the dopamine, the norepinephrine, um, these are a little more stimulating, right? So the serotonin is happy and you're calm and you're warm and fuzzy. And then you get dopamine and particularly the norepinephrine, right? That's your reward pathways. Um, and so you're going to enhance your mental concentration, your focus, your alertness. Um, and for nerds like me, the amino acid in particular that um, dopamine and norepinephrine are um, derived from is called tyrosine. And the reason that I mention that, because this is the real fun fact, um, the enzyme that acts on tyrosine, which is simply called tyrosine kinase, the ACE is, is just that it's an enzyme. That's what that suffix means. Um, you don't care. <laughs> it's a key mediator of cell signaling, right? So, um, this amino acid that you get from dopamine and norepinephrine um, is going to promote things like cell reproduction, cell migration, metabolism, and then ultimately programmed cell death. And that doesn't sound like a good thing, right? Um, it's actually called apoptosis. It's kind of a funny word, so I remember it. Um, so it's not necessarily a bad thing for cells to die. Our cells are constantly dying and, and turning over to new cells um, every day. But the, the reason that we like that, right, we like the programmed cell death is because cancer per, is a result of uncontrolled cell proliferation. So think about like a tumor. Those are new cells and new tissues that are being formed that are not supposed to be there, right? So we want that cell death. We want for our cells to recognize, hey, that's not one of us. We don't even need that. Um, so it's really hugely important in the life cycle of our cells themselves. So I thought that was kind of a, a cool little like fun fact. 
And um, let's see. So then I wanted to go into like a few practical examples, right, of different foods, different beverages for your winter well-being. I call this my like, you call it doctor bag. Basically, I have all these nutrients and supplements and but we're going to do it the easy way with real food. So first of all, we've got things like low fat yogurt. Remember, we talked about the protein in that. Um, especially you want those live bacterial cultures. So remember our gut microbiome is, it's where we make our happy hormones. It's where we absorb all the nutrients that our bodies need to survive and thrive. Um, and so we want those bacterial cultures. Bacteria is a good thing, right? It's about that balance of the good and the bad bacteria, so to speak. And just as a side note, I'm not talking about yogurt like Activia. I know the commercials are great, but you have to eat around 20 of those little containers um, to get the billions of probiotics that you actually need. They may have upped their formula in recent years. Like I remember looking at it. It's, it's been a little bit now. So who knows? Maybe they added more. But back in the day, I remember being like, this is a joke, Jamie Lee Curtis. This is a joke. <laughs> She's their spokesperson, if you didn't know. Um, anyway, so a, a better example, um, I, I don't really like brands. I don't even pay attention that much to them, but the ones they'll advertise like billions of live active cultures. Um, whereas Activia, I think their ad is like good for your gut or maybe just like probiotic. I don't know. Um, but a good example for like a super probiotic yogurt is something called kefir or kefir. I'm pretty sure it's kefir. Um, but that's a really good example. It's it's more like a yogurt shake or a yogurt like drink. If y'all remember Danimals, it's like Danimals for grownups, but it's a little more bitter. Um, and but they can add different fruit flavors, so it tastes really good. Um, but that will fix your gut right up. Just have a little bit each day. Um, and then of course yogurt's gonna have your calcium, your protein, your vitamin D. Um and if you wanted to, sometimes I jazz mine up. I'll put in like some chia seeds or granola or shredded coconut or maybe some fruit. Um, most times I don't, but when I'm feeling fancy or if I'm just really hungry, I'll throw some of that in there. Um, and then if you want extra antioxidants, cinnamon is always really good. I love cinnamon in my yogurt, in my oatmeal. Um, it's actually known to be a very good um, blood glucose regulator. So if you know someone with diabetes, um, putting cinnamon on things regularly is going to be very beneficial to them. Um, another ad adjunct kind of related is apple cider vinegar. You can put a spoonful of that in like your coffee a day or tea. I'll probably go with some coffee. Um, but yeah. <clears throat> so the second thing is going to be nuts. Okay, so these are like just total powerhouses of energy and nutrients. If you look in my cabinet, I should have counted before doing this. Um, excuse me. <coughs> Three sneezes means good luck. I learned that. So I'll take that as a good sign for this episode. Three sneezes. And my friend um, from Iraq says two sneezes means patient. Three me patience that you need to be patient. Three is good luck. And I'm like, so what does one mean? He's like, to sneeze. <laughs> like I was so silly. Um, anyway, I digress. Um, nuts. I have like 20 types in my cabinet. Seriously. Um, I put them on everything that I can think of. Um, it's going to give you your proteins, your good fats, your antioxidants. I like to put them on salads. You can also use like a nut butter, like almond butter. Um, I think that's really good on like whole grain toast or even just a handful of almonds to munch on. Um, it's a really good midnight snack in particular. If you want to feel full and have a dreamy sleep, it's got those omega threes to tranquilize your mind a little. Um, and also fun fact about almonds is they make a lot of spiced varieties that I swear to you are better than chips. Um, they have like salt and vinegar, which I can eat an entire bag of those are dangerous. Like I won't be able to feel my tongue. That's actually probably what happened to the roof of my mouth. Now that I think about it, I was like, so weird. I must have cut myself. No, I probably melted it anyway. And then wasabi soy, like there's just a lot of ways to jazz up seemingly bland stuff. Cause I myself don't love plain almonds. Like the, they, yeah, they're a little weird to me. Um, but then we come to the two most obvious, right? Fruits and vegetables, but there are particular ones. 
during this season of the year, um, they're going to be more readily available and they're going to be better for keeping your mood afloat during this time, so to speak. Um, so as far as fruits go, you're going to look at things like kiwi, which we just bought a whole bunch of yellow kiwi. Never tried that before, but really excited too. So kiwi, oranges, and berries. Oranges have the added benefit of vitamin C, right? We all like to keep our immunity high during flu season and now COVID season, which is, I guess, year round. Um, and, and then berries. Yep. Yeah. So vegetable wise, that's going to be things like broccoli, peppers. Um, and for this purpose, I'll count like potatoes. Um, so all of these fruits, all of these vegetables provide the vitamin C I mentioned. They're going to give you fiber. They're going to give you vitamin A. Um, so, I mean, you can pop expensive mystery pills that claim to have these antioxidant blends all you want. Um, totally fine with that. I've done it myself in the past. Um, or you can just pick up a piece of produce that your body actually knows how to digest. You can even slap some ranch on it if you're a picky eater. <laughs> I love my ranch too. Um, but yeah, I think it, it just makes more sense, right? So the other thing I wanted to mention is I know that fruits and veggies can be either like hard to come by, whether it's seasonally um, or just downright expensive, right? So if, if going fresh isn't an option for you, try frozen. Um, the added bonus of frozen, which I, I love, is that really they never, well, not that they never go bad, but they're not going to rot in your like crisper drawer and you find them a month later, like covered in mold and, you know, all kinds of stuff. So that's what I like, you know, and, and they're especially nice for quick dinners. Like if I have, a, you know, a, a meat or a fish or something that I'll thaw, it's nice to be able to just reach into the freezer and grab out some pre-made mixed med veggies. Um, or if I want a smoothie, right. I very rarely buy raw berries and it's simply for the fact that they're expensive. Um, and I buy them frozen and they, I get them organic and then they never go back. So just my two cents about that. Um, you can even do canned, by the way. I, I have like canned and jarred things like beets and mushrooms. Um, yeah, just getting them however you can. Fresh is obviously best, but work with what you got. Um, another group of foods that are really good are called fermented foods. So this is going to be things like uh, kimchi sauerkraut, uh, my favorite, pickles, um, anything that has that kind of like tangy, I don't even know how to describe it, like almost, I mean, fermented taste, like it's, it's, it's almost like bubbly. Um, kefir actually is an example. The yogurt that I, that I drink is um, a fermented yogurt. And there's also kombucha, which is a sparkling probiotic tea, very, very rich in all the good bacteria. Um, and this is really, really nourishing to your gut microbiome, right? Just generally across the board, everyone benefits from taking in fermented foods. Our gut bacteria loves that. Um, and remember, it's the home of serotonin production. So a happy gut equals a happy, I don't have a good rhyme for that. Let me come back to it. Um, all right. Another group. Don't mind Nyla back there. Just chilling. Um, I'm coming up just to check in. I realized I hadn't even said hi to you guys. Sorry. Roberta, hello. An antidepressant almost killed me. Oh my goodness. I hear a lot of horror stories um, about different medications that people have reacted badly to. I myself has, have had like a pretty close to fatal reaction before. And that's not to scare people from taking them, but you've got to be careful, right? Like, um, ooh, olives. That's a good one. I forgot to mention. I love olives all kinds. My favorite, I think, are olives stuffed with garlic, like a whole little clove of garlic. Mm, so good. Um, that's awesome. Uh, I would love to like learn how to make fresh keeper. I, I, we have a kombucha kit that we got for our wedding that we, we have to start with, but I think I'm a little traumatized because the one time I made kombucha, like mass exploded. Like I thought, <laughs> I thought we were like getting bombed. Yeah, it was bad. So We'll, we'll do it, though, in the safety of our own home. Um, so going back to different types of foods, right, that are going to keep your mood boosted. Look at dark, leafy green vegetables. I think these are going to be the most bang for your buck. Um, these are instrumental in decreasing the symptoms of seasonal affective disorder. 
Um, whenever I, you know, put these together for you guys, I always kind of cro cross reference my facts. And one of the ways for this, the reason that makes me say dark leafy greens are, are our go-to is because time and time again, every source I looked at, that's the one thing that was the most salient. It stood out. Um, and so, yeah, collard greens, turnip greens, spinach, mustard greens, kale, um, you name it. And, and if you don't love the flavors of these raw, saute them. I think butter, salt, and pepper can make anything taste good, I swear. Um, but if you don't love them raw, that's fine. Cook them up. Or if you can, you can disguise them in like a smoothie or a juice. Um, a lot of green juices, they have like two pieces of kale and then like the rest is yummy apple. But you can sneak it in there. So when you can, I definitely recommend that. The greener, the better. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, Roberta, I'm checking out the view. Yep, vinegar. Oh, uh, yeah. The the apple cider vinegar that I mentioned before, which is good for your blood sugars, are really, um, that's my favorite vinegar to use, not flavor wise necessarily, but health benefit wise. <laughs> Um, okay, so yeah, dark, fresh, leafy greens. And and again, they don't have to be fresh. I shouldn't have even said that. They can, we just made um, a big bag of like frozen, it was organic spinach from Trader Joe's. I want to say it was $3 um, in our fridge. And I heated it up and I threw in some canned mushrooms and some canned organic tomatoes. Because this was a, this was basically, we had nothing left in our fridge. So you're like, what can I make? I know I can do this. I've got spaghetti squash and we're going to throw some veggies on there. Um, but again, I was combining all these things, but those dark leafy greens, because I had them frozen, was just the perfect addition and kind of absorbed all the flavor of everything else anyway. So another one, which I love is fatty fish, right? We all have heard about fish oil. We've all heard about, you know, the benefits thereof. Um, it has a lot of vitamin B12, which is kind of our our biggest energy producer, bang for your buck wise. Um, and then you're, of course, omega-3 fatty acids. Um, these have been shown to decrease depression, improve overall mood. Um, some examples of these are going to be like your, salmon's the one that I think is probably the most popular and the most delicious, in my humble opinion. Um, and then you've got like tuna, mackerel, anchovies. Not a, not a huge fan of those, but if you're not a huge fan of fish, um, you can pretty easily whip up like a even a tuna salad sandwich, you know, that still tastes more like chicken salad. Just ask Jessica Simpson. No? Anyone? Very dated joke. Very, very dated joke. Um, anyway, so the final one that I'll talk about is another favorite of mine. I keep saying everything is my favorite. I'm one of those like influencers, right? Where you're like, this is my product. It's my all time favorite. This too. No, I won't be like that. But dark chocolate, real good. Um, you definitely want to get at least 70% of the cocoa slash cacao solids. You'll see the O's and the A's reversed. I don't fully comprehend the difference mainly because I haven't bothered to look. <laughs> but the dark chocolate helps you to release endorphins, to improve your mood. Um, and then a lot of cultures use pure cacao medicinally um, for things like spiritual awakening, heart opening, meditation, um, different types of, of journeying in the mind, right? Um, if you've ever been to a ceremony, I've been to one with um, – Jane, who's another one of our awesome facilitators, going to one this weekend, actually, to Winter Solstice Celebration. I'm super excited. Um, but yeah, I, I love cacao medicinally. I drink it myself maybe like every other week, once or so. It's not it's not a daily thing. It's more of like a general, like, this is a nourishing treat for myself. It's also a little pricey. So this is a nourishing treat for myself, right? Um, and I just just appreciate it and take it in for, for all that it is. And then the other thing that I wanted to mention, we talked about all of these great foods, but we should also talk about hydrating, right? So winter time is usually going to be dry. It's going to be irritating to your throat, your nose, your skin. You're just generally not as lubricated as you would be, um, 
in the summertime, right? Um, I have a humidifier in my bedroom for this exact reason. And I would recommend, obviously water is the bomb, the best, good quality water matters. Um, but, and I, by that, just to clarify, I don't mean like Fiji or Fuji or whatever. I just mean like actually filtered water <laughs> um, with a, a good filter. But anyway, um, going to warm beverages. Those are going to be the things that are really soothing to our chi, our energy, our life force, our prana, if you're a yogi. Um, so you're drinking those warm beverages. They're going through your body. They're stimulating that blood flow because what happens when things get cold, right? They kind of tighten up. You ever had real, I personally struggle with this, so I, I won't even ask. I have real cold feet. Like right now they're freezing cold. I feel perfectly warm, but the area of my feet are always cold. And for that reason, the blood vessels are constricting and they are squeezing and sorry, I just heard a weird noise. My husband's playing something. Um, anyway, they're constricting. It's taking the blood out of those tissues. They're becoming cold. They're becoming even numb potentially. So revitalizing that energy with a warm beverage. Um, another fun fact, like, so ice, and, and really cold beverages. I know, especially in the South, we love things to be ice cold, right? Um, but it, it actually takes energy for your body to warm them up to body temperature before they can even be metabolized or used. So it's actually a bit of a shock to your system, if that makes sense, um, to consume those super, super cold fluids. Um, and again, going back to my crazy German aunt. It's crazy in the best way ever. Um, she told us about basically people in Europe being completely opposed to ice. And I'm like, why? She's like, nobody drinks ice. It, it makes you incontinent. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, you drink ice, your gut gets lazy. Then you you get leaky gut. And then before you know it, you're incontinent. And I'm like, what? But if you notice, the U.S. has a much higher rate than other countries that don't use as much ice. I'm just saying. So room temperature or potentially warm. And I wanted to go into sort of a warm tea blend here. Um, nowadays, they have like a tea blend for everything, right? Um, so have some fun with it. You can buy bulk loose leaf tea and herbs and just use... I wish I had my little metal tea strainer with me, but it's basically just a round tea strainer. You put it right over the top of the cup, you pour the water through it and, and it sits. Um, so it doesn't have to be like an expensive hobby where you're going to these fancy curated tea shops. Like, no, I, I go into like the bulk herb section and put it in my mason jars and that's that. Um, and my favorite blend this is a real favorite because I, I try to drink this every day. And when I don't, I'll do like I did today and drink. How much was that? Probably a gallon, like an entire pitcher that I made. And I just drank the whole thing because I was like, it's been a while. Um, but it is called CCF. That stands for cumin, coriander, and fennel. This is also known as Ayurveda's miracle tea. Um, so this is going to aid in the absorption of nutrients. It's going to stimulate your lymphatic system, um, which, as we know, is, is responsible for our immunity, our circulation, among other things. Um, and I really talk about this tea all the time. Um, I even have a few friends that pay me to brew them in large batches. Um, and my friends, I well, they are my friends, but they're actually my, my nail salon people. <laughs> They, um, I don't know. I just got to talking to them one day when they were doing my nails and they're like complaining about digestive issues. I told them what I take. Um, and, and yeah, so now I, I make it and they give me like 20 bucks for a few gallons of it. <laughs> it's great. It's great side hustle. We should really just barter, right? Like you do my nails, I give you tea. Who knows? Um, anyway, so I wanted to, since I talk about it so much, I wanted to just break it down very, very briefly, um, just to show you why the tea is so powerful. Um, so we'll start with the cumin, remember it's CCF. So cumin is going to stimulate this like digestive fire, okay? It's gonna lower gas, it's gonna reduce bloating, 
um, helping in digestion, flushing out your toxins, helps with congestion, soothes inflamed mucous membranes. So that's like your nose, your sinuses, right? Those are all mucous membranes, even your throat, right? If you have a sore throat and cumin also improves elimination, AKA it helps you poop. And as, and we all know that in medicine, we love to talk about poop. <laughs> um, the next, the next ingredient is coriander. Um, this is particularly good for like irritable bowel disorders, um, intestinal issues. It calms the muscle spasms. So if you're having really strong, like cramping sensation, the coriander is going to do you some great good there. Um, and it just generally reduces inflammation as well. Um, and a little fun fact about coriander, if any of you have um, the condition rheumatoid arthritis, um, it's an immune disorder, but coriander has been even shown to help with that in terms of reducing the, the overall body or systemic inflammation in that. So food is pretty powerful. Um, and then the last ingredient in my special magic tea is fennel. Um, also good for cramping, but this also is going to increase your mental alertness, right? It's going to increase fat burning, move in your lymphatic fluid, and it can even promote the flow of breast milk. Fun fact. I do think you have to be a little careful in pregnancy with consuming this. Um, I am not currently pregnant, so I have yet to read about it, but I will definitely have to one of these days. Um but yeah, you can you can see why I I called food the most powerful medicine on earth, right? It it gives us so much. Um, there's like a fly in here. Uh, and then I wanted to sort of while we're on the nutrient train, just take a minute to say um, one of my plugs for like every patient that a lot of my colleagues would agree on is that. Vitamin D is one of the only supplements that literally every human should take. Um, it's not naturally present in very many meals, and our lab values that we have are in a really wide range for vitamin D. Like there are some specialists where the cutoff is 30, and then other specialists where the cutoff is 50. That's almost twice as much. So those people at 30, I think, I'll just say they don't know better. I won't say they're lazy but they don't want to address it. They don't want to educate their patients. They don't want to supplement. They don't want to learn about nutrition. So definitely supplementing vitamin D. Um, it's essential to absorb calcium also, which is our maintenance for bone health. Um, some of the few examples I'm trying to think of foods rich in vitamin D, like naturally would be salmon. One of them, um, egg yolks, and what's the mushrooms, mushrooms, salmon, egg yolks, and mushrooms. Um, and a lot of people tend to think, which I even used to growing up, that that milk and orange juice and all these are like, oh, they vitamin D and they're great sources. And it's just an additive. It's just fortified. It's not naturally there. They just give you so much propaganda that humans need to eat cow milk. And... <laughs> Um, you know, all these that we, we think we need it and we, we think we, we have to drink this juice to get our vitamins when in reality, we're looking in the wrong place. Um, so you can obviously do the vitamin supplementation. That's hugely important, like I mentioned. Um, but like we've talked about in prior episodes, you do need that sunlight to activate the inactive form that you take in the pill form. So you don't go out into the sun and magically your vitamin D levels get higher. Or if they do, it's because the sunlight activated that vitamin D to increase your levels. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that clearly, uh, but the sun itself is not a direct source of vitamin D, if that makes sense. Um, and then just a quick ex example of like something that we can do if we are experiencing, you know, seasonal affective disorder or any type of mood issues. Um, Amazon makes a happy light. Um, it's I very, very briefly checked it out, but it's basically like a, a bright screen um, that gives, you know, it's like, it's like light therapy, really. Um, I've heard great things about these. It's, it again goes with seasonal affective disorder where it's very dark and gloomy. So you want that bright light, right? Um, I heard great things. Like I said, um, I personally am a huge fan of like Himalayan salt lamps. I think those are really cool. Um, 
candles, good old fashioned, like twinkle fairy lights, um, because they still brighten my space, brighten my mood. They may not have that chemically measured out, you know, whatever frequency it is um, on the on the spectrum that comes out of that, you know, therapy light officially. But I think the biggest thing is just keeping your space itself bright. I'm really sensitive to to light and darkness and in general it, it really depends on the circumstance but if it's if it's dark outside and it's like dim inside i'm very very affected and so i've got two candles lit around me right now as i drop my healing device of the night but yeah i just it's soothing to me i love light I, you know it's it's just a good energy so if you want the happy light you can just i think you type in happy light therapy or something on amazon or google whatever you like to do um and yeah so just to sort of go back and summarize the, the top happy foods um you got salmon you got berries but fresh or frozen totally fine um whole grain bread with protein um you got tea can be green can be black white or that amazing ccf blend i told you about um, and then those leafy greens, number one, first and foremost, leafy green veggies. Um, and of course, more whole grain pastas, dark chocolate, beans. Um, all these are going to be things to sustain your body and your mood during this particularly vulnerable season, we'll say. Um, so the last little segment, since I, I don't want to give you too much nutritional information. So I just wanted to go into some ideas for mood boosting activities, um, things that are shown to enhance uh, the levels of serotonin and dopamine in the same way that those foods do. Obviously, it's you can't linearly compare them side by side. However, it's a similar, or I should say, it's a synergistic effect. When you have one and the other, it's always going to be better than than each alone or either alone. Um, so number one, mood boosting, gratitude journal. I talk about this one all the time too. It's one of my absolute favorites. Um, I have a special like custom watercolor journal made by my bonus sister. Um, and even if I don't write in it every day, I definitely make sure that I sit down and devote some real thoughtful time to it at least like every week. Um, I try to make Sunday my like slow down day where I like I do my Tai Chi, I might watch a little church, I might do some reading, but but nothing hard, nothing stressful, right? Just pampering and calming. Um, but gratitude journal is a big part of that, right? To not only reflect back on how wonderful the week before was, or at least the highlights from the week before, right? But also to look forward to what you have coming up. Sometimes my gratitude journal is things that happen, but other times it's things that I've arranged to happen in the future, right? Maybe it's a, a lunch meeting next month. Maybe it's going to visit a friend for spring break, you know, and any number of things, but I'm still grateful for those things. And, and I, I love celebrating gratitude before, during, and after, right? So, hey, I plan this trip. Hey, I'm on this trip. Hey, I'm back from this trip and I'm exhausted, right? Sometimes that's okay too. Um, but anyway, um, if you don't like writing, another idea that I like is taking maybe just one picture with your phone per day of something that makes you like smile in general, or even something that's pretty that makes you grateful for looking at it, something funny, whatever. Um, I've done that before too. Like I, I, for some reason, got really averse to my journal for a bit and it was easier to capture sort of the beauty on earth. God's magic as opposed to trying to make it myself, right? So um, I took a picture a day. Obviously, multiple pictures is even better than one. You can make a little collage, whatever. Um, but just set sort of that minimum, hey, all I got to do is take a picture a day and I'm done, right? That's like the easiest thing. Um, and you can make a little like photo of the day collage, whatever you want. But I think that's another cool idea. Um, and I like alternatives, right? Because anyone... Anyone who has practiced medicine for a day will know that a patient is going to meet you with resistance, right? I don't like to write. Okay, so then go take a picture. I don't have a camera. Okay, well then if you don't like photography, how about we cut out some pictures from a magazine and, and make a collage or a vision board? This is literally what I did in therapy last week. Um, 
or no, not last week. This was like two days ago. Um, but we just like sat down for the last 10 minutes because we had finished sort of, we had, we had closed that topic and I felt good about where we were. And so she's like, let's channel how you're feeling into I'm so bad at this into like a little art. And I, I honestly resisted this. I was like, are you kidding me? Like, I've got better things to do. Like, can I not just leave early? But I'm really glad I stayed. It was a super fun bonding activity between the two of us. I got to like walk her through it like a little kid with with her diorama, you know? I was like, this is me because I like yoga. This is me because I am going to get horses and I'm going to be living better than my traumatizers. <laughs> All these things. Um, and so, yeah, just getting creative, finding a way to express how you're feeling now, ideally in a positive light. You can, you can do this negative or not negatively. You can do it in a constructively critical way as well. If you want, you know, whatever you're feeling. Um, another thing that I thought of is you can go for a walk. Of course, this is the perfect trifecta combination. I think, um, you get your exercise. It's getting you those endorphins. Plus you're spending time in nature shown to increase serotonin levels. And hopefully you're even getting a little vitamin D activation from that sunshine, right? Um, another idea, phone a friend, like on who wants to be a millionaire. Um, maybe it's someone you haven't talked to in forever. Maybe it's someone you just know is having a tough time and may not have that many people, but you know their number and you want to brighten their day a little. Um, you can also call the warm line at PRN. Uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for a listening voice yourself. I'm going to put up that number at the very end because if I do it now, I might break something. <laughs> um, another thing, I then this is another favorite of mine. I'm going to like ban that word from my vocabulary for a bit, I think. Um, but help someone. Um, I just watched the movie Claws, K-L-A-U-S. It's an animated film. My... Best friend made me swear to watch it when I was just having like a no good, very bad day. And so I'm like, okay, fine. So I pulled it up and what, what's the first thing I see? I'm like, this is animated. Are you kidding me? Like, no, I save those for when I have kids. Like I, I'm not into it. Not my thing. <laughs> um, but I loved it. Of course. Right. Um, I overcame my objection and learned that she was exactly right. It was great. Um, but a quote from that movie, which has stuck with me is that a true selfless act always sparks another. Some people call this paying it forward. I like to think of it as like restocking my karmic bank account. <laughs> um, but really helping others, it, it feels good. It's good for everyone. Um, and I think we should all consciously do more of it, frankly. Um, another one, let's see, read a book, right? This is a huge one that I myself am trying to get back into. Um, I used to be an avid reader. Like I, I would lose myself in literature for hours. Um, and basically these days, right? We've got technology, smartphones, just a, such a fast paced society that it's very hard to pull ourselves into the now like into what's actually going on here and now in this moment and then focus on words on paper in front of you about a different now, right? That That's overwhelming for some of us and me as well, right? I think my biggest and longest standing goal has been to fall in love with reading again. Um, let's see. My last idea. Oh, no, I've got like three more little ones um but listening to your favorite songs making a new playlist um sometimes you can use this as an excuse to catch up with a friend who shares a similar taste in music as you get some recommendations um i just caught up with my friend laura um last night asking for a recommendation for her recipes that she makes as like quick go-to ones um and before i know it she's sending me hilarious pictures of everything from like the canned meal she made to like, you know, pasta, la vodka, whatever fanciness and everything in between. And she got a toddler. So there's some really funny in-betweens, right? Um, but we got to catch up out of it. 
So, so find reasons to connect with people, right? You don't have to be like, hey, I'm just calling to see how you're doing, which is great. You should do that too. But you can say, I also wanted to pick your brain about TV shows or a movie or food or music, you name it. Um, good conversation topics just in general. Um, another idea would be to just simply get your hands dirty. And you can take this literally by like gardening or doing handiwork around the house, or you can simply experiment with different temperatures and textures, like sensations, right? Do you remember making slime and like gack as a kid? Um, or those those like sand and water tables where you've got the dry sand and then the wet sand and then the pure water. Um, I literally mean feeling different textures, these papers, these, you know, whatever. Um, right now, I, I particularly love crystals and I should have brought in one of those, but, um, I love to feel them, whether it's a spiky one, like the amethyst that I have, and I roll it in my hand and I squeeze it into the different acupressure points, um, or the smooth little heart amethyst that, um, my brother-in-law gave me for our wedding. I love rolling that one around because it reminds me of being calm and how the water with time polishes rough edges, you know, the currents and tides. And so touching things, it can, it can be any, any number of things, but just distracting yourself, you know, getting into something that feels productive. Um, but again, of course that, that natural desire to like feel everything and know all the textures has definitely gotten me in trouble. I remember being like 14 in, in the Louvre, whatever the, the museum in Paris, I say, whatever I, I massively respect it. And I was an idiot when I was 14, but I was like, I wanted to touch stuff. Like anytime they said you can't touch it, I would touch it. But it wasn't like, first of all, I didn't do it on everything. And second of all, it was a touch like that where it was just like, you made physical contact. So you're like, I'm such a rebel. Yeah. That was, that was one time. And I almost got thrown out of the museum. Not recommended. Um, Anyway, the last one, really the last one, um, taking a shower or a bath. And it might seem really simple because I myself have been depressed enough that like a shower or a bath is incredibly overwhelming. Um, like it's just not even on my radar to care how I look or smell or whatever. So this to me though is a double, another double whammy like the exercise because it's productive, you're getting clean, but it's also relaxing. Um, my biggest recommendation here, kind of like my CCFT, my, my close second, actually they might be tied Epsom salts. I think they're tied. Yeah. Epsom salts are a life saver. They have magnesium, which is a natural anti-anxiety. Um, it has the added effect of bringing your blood pressure down and side note eases constipation if that's affecting you. Um, but it's basically you you put like two entire cups in your tub, right? And you just soak in it for even 10 minutes and just your body will melt. It's amazing. Your your muscles melt, your anxiety melts, it's perfect. Um, and it helps with soreness. Like a lot of athletes use this. That's how I discovered it. Not that I used to be an athlete. Um, but then if yeah, if you want to like throw in some essential oils or bubble bath and you're like at a home spa. I love doing that. I, I did that just before this. That's why my lion's mane is a little bit weird. Well, it's not weird. It's just very wet and cold. For me. <laughs> but um, yeah. And then remembering that you can use the temperature of the water, really hot, really cold as its own kind of therapy, right? This is often used in DBT, which is like CBT, but it's dialectical behavioral therapy. Um, my method is to usually just sit down in the tub and run like alternating hot and cold water streams over my head. And I'm, I'm meditating on different ideas, different emotions, and sort of using it in an attempt to reprogram. And it's going to work differently for everyone, like everything does. But a, an example of how it works for me is if I start to feel a little heated, stressed, maybe angry about a situation that arises, I'm going to turn the hot off and turn that cold right on. And that immediate rush of cold as I flood myself takes my mind off of all the negative emotions. And I love it. And then what happens? I'm in the cold and suddenly I start to shiver. 
and maybe my my fingertips go a little numb and and my lips turn blue right and what do i do i turn off the cold and i turn back on the warmth and i know there's a, a period of transition where i really have to do mind over matter but then it gets warm and i'm safe and i'm relaxed and i'm home again right so you can you can be really really creative and i'm i'm such a proponent and fan of that because that's how i healed myself right figuring out your what works for you and let me just check in with the comments make sure i'm all Yes, I believe. All right. And we got a couple more minutes. So I'm going to go back to the healing device, which is what I just knocked over off of my chair. So this is a Nikken roller, N I K K E N, I think. I'm not like a brand spokesperson. This has been around for at least 20 years, probably more. Um, my mom had it when I was a kid. Um, but you basically put it on either side of the spine. So here's the spine, and then you're rolling up and down the vertebrae like this. Um, and it's basically, I don't want to say massaging for dummies, but like even people who don't have experience with massaging or maybe don't have the like wrist and hand strength can just kind of hold this and really just kind of go up and down. That's pretty simple. Um, and it feels amazing. It's also magnetized. So it keeps spinning. And, and I like to think that it really like energizes your chi, your life force. Um, it I can't say enough good things about this. Um, you can even use it on yourself. It's a little trickier, but I'll lay on the floor sometimes with it behind my neck or like under my back, getting certain angles. Um, I want to say this is like 50 bucks though, which is expensive in one sense, but not in the sense that like it doesn't go anywhere. You'll have it forever. Um, I personally think it's worth it. It's like my, my, favorite um massage device I'll, I'll say and massage is my favorite form of self-pleasure i really have not gotten i shouldn't say self-pleasure geez louise self what do you call it like hedonism when you're like treating yourself i always go and get massages um <laughs> let me wrap this up before i digress too much um but yes nick and roller n-i-k-k-e-n um increases your chi gets your knots out um accessible massage for everybody big fan um oh and let me put on the warm line like i promised here we go so this is that number that you can call anytime free confidential 24 hours a day seven days a week i have heard magnificent things about the kind voices on the other end of that line the number is 833-390-7728 and I will go ahead to our welcome desk as well. Um, open Monday to Friday, 8 to 4.30. And that is 704-390-7709. And that's pretty much all I've got for you all today. You can catch me right back here this Monday at 6 p.m. for another episode of Mind Body Medicine with Dr. Ariel. Thank you for joining me. I love you all. Blessings, love, and light. Take care and thanks. Bye.